Hey good people, Arthur Morris here. I hope all is well. In this video we're going to look at continuity and one-sided limits. So uh, we've looked at just finding the limit and that was from both sides. So we had to, uh, the function had to approach the same value from the right and the left. As x approached the number from the right and the left, the function had to approach the same value. However, in this lesson we'll look at one-sided limits limits and continuity on a closed interval so one-sided limits if you see a plus up there beside that c that means that we want to find the limit of the function as x approaches c from the right so from the right hand side here will be there and if you see a minus up there that means we want to find the limit of the function as x approaches c from the left okay All right, so here we have the limit of two over x plus two as x approaches two from the left. Now we can still uh, see if we can substitute in, if we can, and that's what we will do. But if we look at this graph as x approaches two from the left, we want to find the value of the function. What's well, the function approaching? And we see that the function in this case is approaching uh, one half. It's approaching one half. So let's substitute in and see what we come up with. Substitute the two in. So that's two over four or one half. All right. Number 10, we have the limit of the absolute value of x minus 10 over x minus 10 as x approaches 10 from the right hand side so from the right hand side uh, we see that we're dealing with this line up top here and as x approaches 10 from the right hand side we see that the value of the function is approaching looks like, looks like it's approaching one but let's check that because we know that on the right hand side of 10 we have 10 11 12 13 and we can't substitute 10 in uh, because that will give us an undefined answer but we can substitute 11 in and let's see what we come up with so let's let x equal 11 and the absolute value of 11 minus 10 over 11 minus 10 so the absolute value of 11 minus 10 that's 1 the absolute value of 1 is 1 11 minus 10 is 1 so you see that we get 1 so we see that that limit as x approaches 10 from the right is 1 now, if there would have been a minus up there, then that would tell us to find the limit of this function as x approaches 10 from the left. In this case, that would be negative one. If there were neither a plus or minus up there, then we would have to say the limit does not exist because if, it, if it's not a one-sided sided limit, uh, that value has to approach the same uh, function value. If not, then it does not exist. All right, so removable and non-removable discontinuities. So here we're looking at vertical asymptotes and holes. Uh, so it says find the values of x, find the x values, if any, at which f is not continuous, which of the discon discontinuities are removable. So to find the discontinuities, the first thing that we want to do is to simplify or factor this denominator. Because remember we cannot divide by zero so that that would cause a discontinuity in the graph so using uh, the rule of a minus b a squared minus b squared uh, that's a plus b times a minus b so 2 plus x times 2 minus x all right now we can't simplify those values in our denominator those factors in our denominator with anything in the simple in the numerator so what we know here is that uh, the discontinuities if we have any they will be non-removable because they will end up being vertical asymptotes so we set those equal to zero each one of those factors equal to zero and we solve so x equals negative two and x equals two. So since these are vertical asymptotes, they are lines. 
So vertical asymptotes here and here those are lines so make sure when you type your answer in that you type them in as the, the equation of a line and those vertical asymptotes all vertical asymptotes are non removable discontinuities so those are non removable discontinuities All right, number 48. Again, let's factor our denominator. We have x squared minus x minus 6 down there. So factors of negative 6 uh, that gives us negative 1 will be negative 3 and positive 2. Now, I see that I can cancel the x plus 2 with the value of the x plus 2 in my numerator. What that tells me is that that is a removable discontinuity. That's considered to be a hole in the graph or, or a removable discontinuity. And some graphs don't even show that hole. But since those would cancel, if I were to simplify, that tells me that the value of x plus 2 equals 0 or the x equals negative 2, that is a removable discontinuity. That is a hole in the graph. Um, and the value of 3, that is a vertical asymptote, as you can see on the graph here, and that's a non-removable. So non-removable and removable because the x plus 3 is a vertical asymptote. I think I just wanted the values there, so you may not have to put the x equals on this particular problem, but if it asks for the vertical asymptote, you must write it as the equation of a line. Okay. So testing for continuity. Testing for continuity. Uh, so the easiest way to test for continuity to see if a function is continuous is to set your denominator equal or see if you can simplify or factor your denominator and set it equal to zero. So in this case, we have uh, x over x squared plus x plus two. So I, I don't have any values of two that I can add up to be one, uh, but we can try to solve this by using the quadratic formula where one is a, one is equal to b, and one is equal to c. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over 2 times a. So negative 1 plus or minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. And if we continue to simplify that, that gives us the square root of negative 7 underneath our radical, which we know we cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real number answer. Therefore, we don't have any discon continuities in this graph because we can't solve and get a real number answer uh, so this is continuous so this is continuous and it asks for the interval on which is continuous sorry about that it asks for the in interval on which it is continuous well since we don't have any discontinuities then it's continuous from negative infinity to positive infinity Okay, so number 78 here we have uh, f of x equals x plus 1 over the square root of x. So let's take that square root of x and essentially what we're trying to find is our domain. Um, so if we look at the square root of x and we're looking at our domain for this, we know that x must be greater than 0. Uh, it can't be equal to zero because if it's zero, we will be dividing by zero, uh, which would make it undefined. And we cannot take the square root of a negative number and get a real number answer. So X must be greater than zero. So what that tells me is that in my domain and in interval notation would be from zero to infinity. So it's continuous from zero to infinity. 
x is continuous from 0 or the function is continuous from 0 to infinity. So basically find your domain and, and whatever your domain is that tells you uh, where it is continuous. Okay, the intermediate value theorem. The intermediate value theorem says that if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then the, uh, the function f of a is not equal, and the function f of a is not equal to f of b, and k is any number in between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one number c in uh, the closed interval from a to b, such that f of c equals k. All right, all right, all right. So uh, it says that we want to use the verify that the intermediate value theorem applies to the interval and find the value of C that's guaranteed by the theorem. All right, so we're looking at a graph here. And uh, our, our closed interval, this is looking at the x axis from zero to five that's what we're looking at and it's a parabola and I think this thing kind of scoops up here and we'll see in just a second well the first thing we need to do is to see if uh, f of c see if the value of this function 11 falls in between the values of the function at 0 and 5 so let's find f of 0 and f of 5 and see if 11 falls in between those values So f of zero gives us zero square plus zero minus one, which is negative one. And f of five gives us five square plus five minus one. So 25 plus five is 30 minus one is 29. And 11 does, f of c does fall in between those two values. Therefore, uh, that verifies the intermediate value theorem applies to this uh, problem. So what we are saying is that somewhere between negative 1 and 29 on the y-axis we have a value of 11 that will fall where x will fall between 0 and 5. We have a function value of 11 where the function value the x function uh, x of that function will fall between 0 and 5. Okay so since 11 is greater than negative 1 but less than 29 then the intermediate value theorem applies and let's find f of c so it gives us that f of c or let's find c sorry f of c equals 11 therefore using the given function f of c equals c squared plus c minus 1 and we know that f of c equals 11, so we can replace f of c. We can replace f of c with 11. So we wanna replace that with 11. And then we're going to, uh, let's move that 11 over so we'll have our quadratic equation. So if we subtract 11 from one, that gives us negative 12. So we have C squared plus C minus 12 equals zero. That's because I subtracted 11 from both sides. So now we need to solve for C. So we need to factor first. So C plus four times c minus 3 equals 0. Set those factors equal to 0 and solve. So c equals negative 4 or c equals 3. Well in this case we, want, we know that c had to fall in between 0 and 5 so the only logical or possible answer for it to fall in that closed interval from 0 to 5 
be for C to be equal to 3. And that is the intermediate value theorem. Alrighty, good people. Hope you found this video to be helpful, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.